Hi everyone, welcome to Living Linky Style. My name is Linky Mare, and you may remember me from Food Network Star Season 8 that aired last summer, but in the meantime, I get to play outside cooking on my lovely big green egg. Father's Day is coming up, and you, you know what? I am a new egghead, and I have fell in love with this grill. There's so many different grills out there, and it's summertime, so you want to get outside and do some fun things outside, um, and grill and cook and everything. But this big green egg of mine can actually bake and smoke and grill and do everything what it is. So I'm a true egghead, and I'm going to show you how to use this thing today. What it, what it is is basically it's a ceramic grill, and um, it has two ways of air supply. It has the bottom one and the top one. So the wider I open it up, the hotter this thing gets. So what I'm going to cook for you today is I'm going to do, you know, it's Father's Day. I have to do steak and potatoes. There's just not even any other way around it. And even though I don't have any children, I do have two cats. So my hubby gets to have a Father's Day for being the father of two cats. So what we're going to do without any ado, we're going to go ahead and get our potatoes in. So what I like to do and, and I will t show, show you how to cook a full meal on this thing. You don't need an oven, you don't need anything else. So we're gonna get our potatoes and we're gonna get a piece of foil. Let me get this out of the way. I'm actually gonna come around and do this. So I'm basically nestling and the wind's picking up right here so I hope my foil doesn't blow away. So you can buy the baby, little baby potatoes or you can buy, I love red skin potatoes and I usually just cut them kind of in quarters or you can half them. There we go. And I like them with the skin on. And some people say, well, you know, I, I don't like the skin on. You can peel them. No worries. You can peel them. Oh, that's a bad spot right there. Let me just get that away since we're outside. It's so much fun. You just get to do this and maybe next year there will be a potato coming up right there. But um, what I like, I like to keep the skin on um, because I think that that's where all the nutrition is. So, um, and red skin potatoes are so pretty and they're so lovely with the color that you kind of want to keep that skin. Okay, I think that's good. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to drizzle a little bit of olive oil. There we go. Just to moisten it up a little bit. And we're gonna do salt. You know what, I, I love salt. I know it's not healthy for you, but I love salt. So some salt, and we're gonna do some pepper, some ground pepper. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna close up this foil, just gather the corners, make sure that you twist it off, and then we're gonna slap this puppy just like this onto our big green egg and we're going to get it on the corner that way it can smoke right there now like i said this thing almost acts like a convection oven but it can grill too so we're going to get our potatoes right there we'll close that up and then i'm going to use a cast iron skillet to make a sauce so we're doing steak we're doing potatoes we're going to do a little bit of asparagus because you can't go wrong with asparagus like you know you guys know this by now my husband's a carnivore but he loves asparagus for some reason. So I'm gonna do that so he gets his veggies in. But uh, we're gonna do a sun-dried tomato onion pepper sauce to go with the steak. And so what, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and get that cast iron on there. And the reason I'm using cast iron is because it's so durable, so nothing will go wrong with it. And we're gonna start out with some butter. And we're basically gonna, oh, there's a bug in there. That's what you get when you're outside, <laughs> fling, the butter, fling the butter and get it out of the way. So we're going to start out with a little bit of a roux. So that's about two tablespoons of butter. And we're going to add some flour. And we're just going to give that a nice little stir. And we want this to brown a little bit. You know, you get different kinds of roux. You get a blonde roux and a brown roux. Um, and what it is, is the more it cooks, the more nuttier flavor it gets. So this is going to go great with the sun-dried tomatoes. There we go. I'm going to give that a nice little stir. And I don't know if you guys can see, but it's thickening up a little bit. And then we're going to add our onions. Oh, and that thing is getting hot. This thing is probably already up to five or 600 degrees. And speaking of which, these things are getting hot too. So let me take them off before I scorch off my hands. There we go. So we have our onions. And then we're going to add liquid, and I'm actually going to add some apple juice. 
But you can use any kind of liquid to that. And we're gonna let that reduce. There we go, and that will get nice and beautiful there in a minute. And then we're gonna add some sun-dried tomatoes. And you can get the peppery kind if you like more spice, but we're just gonna add about a quarter cup of the sun-dried tomatoes. There we go. Give that a stir. Oh, that won't come off, there we go. And then, of course, we want some salt. And then we're gonna add some pepper. Now, this is a peppery sauce, so we're gonna add black pepper. Whew, y'all, this is getting hot. What, what happens is the more air hits this grill, the hotter it gets. So you can literally like smoke a butt for several hours, like a Boston butt and then open up your grill and grill a piece of steak. Now I'm gonna add some cayenne pepper because this is a pepper s steak. And I'm also gonna add a little bit of rosemary seasoning. And whew, it's blazing, it's hot out here. There we go. Ooh, my eyes are already starting to tear up. And we're gonna let that hang out. And in the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and get our steak prepped. But before we do that, since it's so darn hot out here, why not mix a drink? So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna add a little bit of ice, now that the ice is almost melted to pieces. Some ice. And since this is for dad, you know, they may not want things that's too sweet, but if, it's like, if, if, if your dad or your husband is like my husband, they like a little bit of sweet, but not too overpowering. So I'm gonna use a little bit of cranberry juice. There we go. And I'm gonna use a little bit of raspberry vodka, but you can use any kind of vodka. A little, or a lot. There we go. And to bring out that little zestiness, oh guys, I am sweating up a storm. To bring out a little zestiness, we're gonna add some triple sec. Now, I don't know if you know this, but when I do with my bottles, if it sits for a while, the alcohol goes to the bottom. So I always tip my bottles right before I pour it. So we're gonna add a little triple, triple sec. And then if you have a stir, you can stir this, or you could just get this straight into the cup and get all of those. And it's beautiful because it's nice and co colorful, but it's not overly sweet. It has a little bit of twang, and then you can add some orange slices, or you can actually garnish one on the side. And you have a beautiful drink that's manly enough, but sweet enough so you can satisfy everybody's taste buds. Oh, my paper towel is blowing away right here. And don't mind if I do. It's perfect, the portions are perfect for that. So, we have our drink, our potatoes are roasting. Let's check on our sauce before we get our steak on there. I don't know if y'all can see this, but what I'll do is I'll actually, you know, Big Green Egg was nice enough to send me these great little gloves that is so durable, I could lift up this thing just like that. I mean, look at that, it's beautiful. So your liquid's reducing, your um, tomatoes are rehydrating, and it's gonna thicken up as that liquid dissolves. And if I don't brow, like scorch off my eyebrows. Funny little story, and I may have told you all this before, but I was in culinary school and I was working on a sauce ladder. Let me quickly say this. This does the temperature right here. This controls the temperature. So I kind of want the temperature between three and 400. So I'm gonna close these vents up just a tiny tad bit and the bottom one will be fine just like that to make sure that we regulate our, our airflow and our temperature. But I was in culinary school and um, I was actually working on a sauce ladder and I, I decided I came up with this great bright idea, ooh, I'm dripping, to do a tequila pecan sauce. And I flambéed it and it made this beautiful big flame and that night I was driving home and I went, <gasps> where is my eyelashes? So in the meantime, since I've been working on a grill and grilling outside and doing all these things, I don't worry much about eyebrows and eyelashes. So if they scorch off, we'll just get some fake ones. But anyways, without any ado, we'll go ahead and prep our meat. Now, 
I'm gonna use this strip steak, New York strip. Um, but I will say one of my husband's favorites um, is ribeye because it's more juicy, you know, and it has some fat to it. Um, but you can use any kind of steak. You can use flat iron steak. You can do whatever your husband's favorite is. Some people like filet mignon. For me, it's a slightly um, dry. I know it's not supposed to be dry, but to me, I like the little bit fatty part. So this has perfect little fatty parts to it. So since we're doing the pepper and the sun-dried tomato sauce, we don't want to overpower with the seasoning on the steak. So we're, oh, I have bugs attacking me. That's the bad thing about the outdoors. All right, so we're gonna do some salt. There we go. And some pepper. And that is basically it. You can add more things if you want. You can add some garlic. You can add a little bit of cayenne since it's going in the sauce, but just a tiny bit. My husband loves spicy things, so the more spice, the better. And we're gonna flip these. There we go. Let me get this. And some more pepper. And some more salt. You know, I love that smell when the steaks hit the grill to start. Oh, whoops, a daisy. When the steak hits the grill to start out with, that it makes and that smell that you get with the smoke, it's just delicious. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and open this up and we'll give our sauce another stir. And this is actually thickening up beautifully. And I'm gonna add just a little bit more juice to it because I do want my onions to cook a little bit more, but I don't want it to dry out completely, my sauce to dry out and get too thick. And you want your onions to get nice and translucent -y. That's when you know it's perfect. But I'll go ahead and uh, just taste this. It's delicious. You can really get that finish of the burn in the throat, but it's not overpowering, and you can really taste that almost a smokiness of the sun-dried tomatoes. And I'm scorching off my face here. There we go. So we'll give that another stir. We'll add a little bit more so that can reduce and what the apple juice does is it gives it a little bit of a sweetness. Because I don't know about you guys, but when I eat sun-dried tomatoes, that it has a little bit of sweet. So to me, the sweet kind of balances out the spicy on your steak. There we go. And then we're gonna get our steaks on there. And this is the fun part. Do you all hear that? It's just beautiful. There we go. And I'm actually gonna keep this open for just a little bit because I want some of those flames to come up and get those nice sear marks on the bottom of the grill. And when, as soon as this fat starts dripping down, that's what you'll get, you'll get those flames. So open that up for a minute. We'll give this another stir. But do you see what I mean? I mean, we have our potatoes roasting. We have our sauce cooking. Now we have our steaks on there and there's still plenty of room where we can get our asparagus and we'll start prepping that while well, that's going. Let me get this out of the way and clean off our workspace here. So with our asparagus, I like my asparagus very nice and easy because it's so tasty. And I'm actually I'm one of those people, I love to eat this raw when it's nice and crunchy. Um, but you can actually, with your asparagus, you don't have to cut them, you can just snap them and they will, where they snap off, that's basically um, where you want them. Or you can just cut off those ends. But we're gonna use some olive oil. There we go, and don't worry about to using too much because you're just going to douse it and then salt and some pepper now you see what I'm doing here I'm building flavors but I'm still keeping it simple um, you know sometimes when you're camping outside you ne don't necessarily have all the fancy herbs and everything that you have in your kitchen well with this you still get all of that flavor with the different ingredients but you're not overpowering it. And let me quickly give my sauce a stir. There we go. And that sauce is just about ready. All right, so then we're gonna toss this a little bit. And something else I like to add, you can add either some lemon zest, or I like to, whoops, my microphone's hitting the, hitting the big green egg. Or you can take a little bit of orange juice and just kind of squeeze it on there. Or lemon juice, either one. So that's ready to go. And where's my tongs? And we're gonna go ahead and flip this. 
Look at that. You cannot get more perfect grill marks than that. There we go, and I'm gonna move this over so we can have room. Look at that, that's perfect. Now, if you want the perfect magazine grill marks, what you do is you flip it this way, and then when you flip it, you turn it the other way. You get those crosshairs, as I call them. Okay, so our sauce is just about ready. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and get this off, off the grill. Get my big green gla gloves on, whew, while I'm sweating up a storm. Y'all, it is hot and it is July, almost. <laughs> All right, here we go. And I'm gonna just go ahead and get this on the ground. Since it's cast iron, I don't wanna break my um, lovely little glass table here and that will shatter it. So we're gonna get that and I'm gonna move my potatoes over a little bit that way. And we're gonna get that. We're gonna close this up for a second and let those steaks get nice and cooked. But basically it's like cooking it in an oven now, but it's still getting that grill sear on the bottom with the flames. And um, then a minute, when this gets close to being done, we're gonna get the asparagus on there. Because remember, you don't wanna overcook your asparagus. You literally want it on there for like five minutes at the most. So speaking about five minutes, do y'all see this smoke? Oh, I wish you can smell it. Like I'm always trying to get the smell from here to you guys out there, but there's no other way you can do this by just getting out there and grilling. And this is a great Father's Day present, by the way. Here we go. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and check on my steak. They're perfect, they can go a little bit longer. And I'm actually, I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna twist them around, get them, uh-oh, that way. No, did I do it right? Yes, no, yes, there we go. The blonde at work here. Get it, get it that way. That way we leave some room for our asparagus. But since we're waiting, we can actually check on our potatoes. Ooh, let me not break that, let me get this glove on and we'll see oh that's hot oh, I mean just look at that it's just so pretty it's so colorful and we'll check this uh, they still have a little bit to go maybe about a few more minutes but they're cooking at such high temperature that really you don't need them to be on there longer than about 20 20 minutes 20, 30 minutes at the most. We'll get that on there and we'll check on, ooh, would you like some paper towel with your steak? And look at that, ooh, look at that. Check that out, like that's just proud. I'm just so proud. We'll get that there and get the flame started a little bit. So while this is grilling, let me go ahead and tell you guys, um, you can do this um, with any other thing. Like, like I said, I love this. I've actually, I've baked pizza on this. I have done, I smoked Boston Buds on it. Um, and what it is, it's, it's, it's basically a convection oven, grill, smoker, everything in one. The reason I like this is you can do a whole meal on there and not have to worry about running back and forth between um, the kitchen and every, everything else. And in South Africa, and I think it's in America too, you know, I'm from South Africa. Um, grilling has always been a men's thing, you know, it's, it's like my husband's always the one grilling and everything. Since I've had this puppy, I'm like, honey, step aside, let mama handle this. <laughs> and I absolutely love to play on this thing. And we're going to flip our, uh oh, there we go. Let's flip our stikes one more time. There we go. It's beautiful. Gorgeous. Actually, that can go back that way again and it smells like grill, it smells like I can smell the sauce, and that sauce should actually be really nice by now. I'm gonna move this here, and I'm gonna go ahead and get my plate ready so we can plate up. There we go, and I'll put my bracelets back on, or I'll just move them out of the way. There we go. I don't know if y'all can see this, but I, it is hot out here, but I'm so happy that summertime has finally hit New England, because I have friends back in the South that say, oh, Linky, it's been 80 degrees, 90 degrees here. Well, I'm happy that it finally struck New England. There we go, we'll move that out of the way. And we're gonna flip our steaks one more time. No, they're actually, yeah, there we go. We'll flip them one more time. 
And I don't know about you, but I like my steak medium rare. It's, it's almost like you can send the cow by and I'll just take a chunk out of it and slap some butter on there and it's delicious. Um, so you can actually just use a meat thermometer if you want to do this or what I usually do is, do is I just touch it by touching it um, and the more firm it gets the weller done your steak is. So if it's like still poking in a little bit um, then it means that it's actually perfect for me. Um, but we'll go ahead and get our asparagus on there because at this, oh, or you can lose an asparagus. Actually, we can just use my hands for this. There we go. And there's gonna be some flames now because of the oil that I had there. There we go. Now, you can always use a, um, a wok or a vegetable wok and place that on the grill and use that. But to me, I kind of, oh, where's the paper towel? I kind of like that um, almost charred taste on the asparagus. Let me move that out of the way. And like I said, you kind of just want there on there for a little bit. And you want to make sure that you're putting this, um, if the grill is going this way, you want to make sure you're angling it. That way you don't lose asparagus like I just did. Do as I say, don't do as I do. There we go. And we'll close that back up for a second. And I'm actually going to go ahead and move this out of the way so that we can plate up go and let me see if this is oh that's still hot where's my other glove here we go my other glove we'll move that back up to here or actually is that that may still be hot yeah it's still a little bit hot we'll just keep we'll keep it down there I'll just be plating back up and forth and we'll get our plate nice and clean there we go so we have our drink, move my bra bracelets out of the way, and you all see the sweat just dripping from me. So hot out here. Here we go. Now one very important thing, when you're grilling on the big green egg, it's important that you burp your, your big green egg. It sounds funny, but what you're doing is you're lifting it barely and let that smoke come out a little bit. See, especially with that oil heating it now, that way when you open it back up, it's not that much smoke hitting your face and you're not scorching off your eyebrows or your eyelashes. So that being said, without any ado, let's get this right here. And our steak is perfect actually at this point. And I'm actually gonna put one of it here because we just need one for dad. We'll put one right here. We'll get that out of the way. That's for me for later. So we have our beautiful steak, there we go, and we're going to add, oh I just lost another asparagus in the fire, and we have our beautiful asparagus, let me go ahead and get the other asparagus off too, that way they don't, don't scorch, and they can be Scooby Snacks for later, there we go. And they're actually, they're perfect. They, they're supposed to be nice and flexible when you're bending them, but still crunchy so that you're getting all that goodness in there. Oh, and let me just douse myself again. I think that's the word, right? Okay, so your steak, your asparagus, and then comes our potatoes. There we go. And we'll go ahead and close this. And we'll just close that up so that that can actually die out and we'll hang this so we'll get our potatoes open ah oh, beautiful they are perfect let me get this out of the way so you have your meat and dad gets his potatoes there we go that one's actually stuck a little bit well, that one didn't play with the party. Now at this point, if you have some melted butter, you're welcome to drizzle some butter over. And then we're gonna grab our sauce. Here we go. And this is where, I mean, look at that. It's just beautiful, it's beautiful coloration. So you've got the green, you've got the steak, you've got the beautiful red skin potatoes. And then we're gonna add that steak sauce. Oh, this thing is dropping. There we go. There we go. 
just over one half of it. And if this does not make dad happy, I do not know what will. And I'm actually gonna taste this because it's been torturing my, whoop, it's been torturing my senses all day. Alrighty. And I don't have a fork, so I'm just gonna, he won't know if a little piece is gone. Mm. Delicious, perfectly cooked. And a little bit of their onions. It goes great together. It has that little bit of sweetness to it. Perfect finish in the throat. With the potatoes and the asparagus, you cannot have a better treat for dad. Until next time, you guys, keep up with me on Living Linky Style. Mm, let me finish doing. Mm. Livinglinky.com is my website, and I have lots of great recipes on there. I'm also on Facebook and Twitter, so you can keep up with me there, see my classes, see my next events. And until next time, stay cool, have great food, and stay out of trouble. I'll see you next time.